Good morning, good evening, hey. To those of you that are watching the replay, good evening. Come on in from all over the world. Thank God. Hey, IG, good morning. Good morning, Zoomers. Good morning, Facebook Live. Good morning, those of you that are on YouTube. God bless you on all of the platforms. This is Pentecost. <laughs> Come on in. What our hearts. I know, Dr. Ingram. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Good morning. Hallelujah. Your presence, Lord. <laughs> Woo! Come on, let's welcome Holy Spirit. We are post resurrection. Come, flood this place. Your glory. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. To be overcome. Hey. By your presence. Good morning, Zoomers. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Hallelujah. Hey. Your. Woo. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, yes, your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. So glad that you've joined us for School of the Holy Spirit. I'm Bishop Coletta J. Bond. I'm a pneumatologist, among other things. <laughs> but in this season, God has called me to get his church to Pentecost. My life right now, yes, yes, yes. Let your presence feel. Right Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Oh, Woo, glory, glory, glory. Yes, yes. Good morning, Pastor Michael Carver. <laughs> Pastor William LeBone, evangelist to Keeper Rogers. Coming up the timeline, Sandra Coleman. Mary Young, Rhonda Dooley, come on in. Our IG family is with us as well. Good morning, Pastor Erskine, Dr. Jessica Ingram. Good morning. I love to praise all of you that have come on to share it. This is it. More aware. Let us, let us experience the glory. Uh, yes. More aware. Hallelujah. Good morning, my evangelist. I see the evangelist's daughter. Good morning, Ann Thompson. Philma Seals. Ronnie Hinton. Miyoshi. Good morning, Overseer Ryan. Good morning, Pastor John J. Davis. Anna Craig. Good morning, Maria James. Coming up the timeline, Regina Adams. Wanda Sue. Yes, for those of you that are joining the replay, put your name in. Come on. 7 a.m. Eastern Standard and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard. You get it twice a day <laughs> as we make our way to Pentecost. Let us experience the glory. Hey, Woo! become more aware of your presence. Dr. Michelle Cotton, Kathy Wilson, good morning, darling. Camilla Cook, y'all coming in so good. Come on in, like that and share. There's my sweet singing sister, Ruthie Sinclair. Hey, baby. 
Pastor Rita Bill, Tina Cole. Make us aware. Yes, shout out C Smart. Good morning. God bless you. Hey, Lux Charm, what's going on? All of you that are joining us on IG, would you share this on your page? Share this link. Those of you that are joining us by Zoom, thank you. Overseer Ryan, until all have heard, make us aware. Yes. Make us aware. I'm so excited about what God is doing in this season. And as we have come out of Pentecost, uh, out of resurrection, out of Lent, out of Holy Week, out of Good Friday, we now must enter Pentecost from Passover to Pentecost. So the next few weeks will be together, specifically focusing on this season of the preparation for Pentecost. Remember now that we are post-resurrection. And the historical record says that Jesus was yet in the resurrected body in the earth and that he was seen, that he was heard, he was felt, he was experienced past his resurrection. Not only did Jesus rise from the dead on that day, but the Bible says that all of those that had died in the faith that they also were raised on the same day of resurrection. So what that says to me is that resurrection power is available to us if we die in the faith. If we die in the faith, we shall be raised in the faith. Praise God. That is the promise of God to us, that if we die in Christ, uh, we will not taste death as others do, that there is a resurrection for the saints Praise God for that. There is a resurrection for the people of God. Aren't you glad about it? <laughs> I'm glad about it. If he got up, I'm going to get up too. Just like he said. Mama Pearl, it's so good to see. Praise God. Good to see and pray. Uh, praying for you in this season with Papa Nore. Latanya Phoenix, good morning. Good afternoon. Neil Hambright, good morning. God bless all of you that are joining us in the morning live and in the evening replay. So excited about the opportunity now uh, to live stream uh, all over the world. It is exciting. So uh, if you do not have the book, uh, The Beauty of Spiritual Language by Jack Hayford, please order it, Unveiling the Mystery of Speaking in Tongues, The Beauty of Spiritual Language, this is a book that we are studying uh, during Pentecost. And those of you that are at the cathedral, you want to pick, just pick the book up as well. This is going to be our Bible study for the next few weeks. And we want to approach, if you will, speaking in tongues a little differently, possibly than what you have heard. We want to demystify it. We want to make sure that you have a good understanding of what this spiritual gift means to your life. Hallelujah. Janine Weatherspoon, Pastor Sheila Donald Johnson, Gladys Ayers. So glad to see you all. Good, 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 good day, good day, good day, good day. As we make our way to Pentecost, Lisa Kirby, Gwendolyn Foster, Pastor Barbara Etheridge, please come on in. Please come on in. All right, get your pencils and papers. Amen. The Beauty of Spiritual Language by Jack Hayford. We're going to be reading this book, Unveiling the Mystery of Speaking in Tongues. And we are going to dig deeply into what this really means, what this really looks like uh, in terms of the spiritual gifting of speaking in tongues. What does that mean to the believer, Pastor Jill Folsom? What does that mean? Praise God. So we're going to post this on our page. Uh, amen. The beauty of spiritual language unveiling the mist. Now, listen, when you come to class, if you are at all able, bring your Bibles, your paper Bible, bring your notepads, bring your pencils, bring your marker. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bring everything that you need so that you will be able to uh, 
write down the notes. You should be taking notes. Uh, you should be writing notes to yourself so that after the study, you can go back and read. This is the school of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost in a pandemic is now the school of the Holy Spirit. And we are looking, praise God, very soon uh, to incorporate the school of Holy Spirit in the academic space, praise God, so that the school of Holy Spirit is something that you can access either online as a module in teaching, as well as in some academic spaces where universities and or seminaries can engage some of our courses. So this is not just something we get that we're doing because we don't have anything else to do. We're writing curriculum. We are designing uh, modules so that you can really learn this. Praise God, Zebulon Clayton, Pastor Rhonda Dooley, God bless, amen, Marla King. So to God be the glory, amen, amen, and amen. So thank you for joining, but come to this class serious. Come to the class. Now, if you're driving or you're on your way to work, then we understand that, amen, <laughs> you can't take notes, but go back to the replay and watch it when you can sit down with your paper Bible. You know, what happens a lot in the church world is that we hear a lot of things, but we don't retain it. We hear a lot because we are, we are, we are consumers, basically. But I don't want the School of the Holy Spirit information to be just something you hear. I want this to be something that you're in, you're in embedding in your spirit. You're engaging in your spirit. You are, you are, you are putting this in the deep places of your heart. You're hiding it in your heart. You want not only to learn it, but you want to teach it. You understand, you want to not just learn it, but you want to teach it. Praise God. You want to learn it, but you want to teach it. You want to teach it to your family. You want to teach it to your churches. You want to teach it uh, to your children. Amen. You want to teach it uh, all wherever you can to your choir, to your worship team. You want to be able to teach the lesson. Uh, one of the things that I have learned is that when you can teach it, you have learned it. Amen. <laughs> so I want you to make sure that you are engaged. I know some of you are still uh, getting your your uh, breakfast or your dinner ready. You're making your way to work or you're just coming in from work. If you're watching the evening uh, replay. But I want you to someplace you know, sit down with this information. And when you sit down with it, uh, you can begin to engage it uh, in such a way that you now have the ability to teach it. Amen. Second Timothy 2 and 2, the things that you've heard of me among faithful witnesses, the same commit to others who are able to teach others also. That is my ministry scripture, 2 Timothy 2 and 2. And so when you can teach it, Dr. McHugh, when we can teach it, when we can take it and teach it, now you know the lesson, amen? So don't just come to school of the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of people on. They're exhorters, they're teaching, they're thrilling you, they're motivating you. But when you come to school of Holy Spirit, Come with the intent of learning and come with the intent of teaching others. Amen. So the beauty of spiritual language, unveiling the mystery of speaking in tongues. Uh, we're going to really be getting deeply into this as we make our way to Pentecost. Amen. And you say, well, why, why do we need to know more about tongues, uh, Dr. Janine Daly, Mary Wilson Williams, Pastor Fox. Why do we need this? 
We need to know, first of all, what Jesus Christ has made available to us. We must stop making tongues an insignificant component of our spiritual walk. We've got to stop doing that. We have got to understand, uh, Pastor Dilworth, uh, Pastor Hillary Garner, uh, Pastor Barbara Dogan. Absolutely. Many of us may speak in tongues. We may have experienced others speaking in tongues and may not fully understand it, may not fully understand. And still there's confusion around it. There still may be some confusion around it. There still may be some confusion around tongues, around interpretation, around the gifts of tongues, around the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the speaking in other tongues. Now, until you can demystify it, because there's so many different streams, different people teaching it, and people are teaching it from their own experience. People are teaching it from their own doctrines. But I want to demystify it. I want you to understand it as a practical, usable gift that came to us after Pentecost, after the resurrection. I got Pentecost on the brain that came to us after the resurrection. This is one of the things that was given to us in the upper room after the resurrection. And so our journey doesn't stop at the empty tomb. Our journey with a faith does not end with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That we have been commanded to get to Jerusalem and to wait until the power engulfs us. So what power are we talking about? We're talking about the power of Holy Spirit. Now, I'm from the Baptist construct, and so I'm fully aware uh, that we believe in the Holy Spirit as Baptist people, but we believe in the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We have been taught as Protestants that when we give our life to Christ and place our faith in his finished work, that we receive Christ in our hearts by his Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah, Avery Chung. Hallelujah. We understand that. That's what we teach, Camilla. That's what we believe, Minister Bonner. We believe that, Carmen Missy. We believe that. And so when we when we talk about Holy Spirit in certain uh, spaces, we are not talking about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that comes when we receive Christ by faith. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? So this is not foreign to us. The Catholics, the Protestants, Lutherans, Methodists, uh, Episcopalians, Presbyterians, this is not foreign to us. But when we began to move into the next dimension beyond the indwelling, beyond the indwelling of Holy Spirit. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, Nigeria. Good morning, son. When we really get past that, when we get the when we get the indwelling of Holy Spirit, that's that secures our salvation. But after after the resurrection, Jesus opens up a spiritual portal. Hallelujah. Jesus opens up a spiritual portal by his resurrection. Hallelujah. And he gives us an insight into the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He gives us an insight. He gives us and insight, he gives us access to something much greater and much more powerful. And so we begin to see these gifts of Holy Spirit now in operation 
among those who were believers. So now we see prophecy. We see healings. We see uh, men and women now experiencing speaking in tongues. And so we have to realize, Kai Kai, that, that now Jesus, through his death, burial, and resurrection, has opened up a dimension of access and spirituality that we did not formally have access to. The veil of the temple was rent. So we have access to God without the priesthood that we now have been, been, made, been made a kingdom of priests and kings. And we have access now, Jesus, he then gives us the promise that the father is going to pour out his spirit. This did not happen before the resurrection. This only could be made possible after the resurrection. He said, as John baptized in water, so now shall you be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and in the uttermost parts of the world. You now shall receive power. Hallelujah. You now shall receive power. That was not available prior to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So it would be very, I think, disrespectful, maybe, for us to discard and or dismiss, Kimberly, uh, this wonderful gift, this gift of the Holy Spirit in new ways, in ways that we did not fully understand as long as Jesus was bodily with us. Now, speaking in tongues, which was evidenced in the upper room, that's the first time that we see speaking in tongues engaged by more than one person. So we see baptism in the Holy Spirit, cloven tongues of fire that sat on each of their heads. And they began to speak in tongues. We do not see this prior to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So something really fantastic, something really amazing happened after the resurrection, after the ascension that gave us, the people of God, something that we did not have prior to to the resurrection, hallelujah. So now Holy Spirit is the gift. Now we must move from the era of Jesus into the era of Holy Spirit, hallelujah. And so when we start thinking about tongues, we start thinking about what happened in the upper room. Why, why did they need uh, that why was that the why was that the, the the thing that would signify and would identify this dispensation is now different than the dispensation of Jesus? Well, we don't know the answer to that. All we know is that the Father's plan to baptize us in the Holy Spirit came with speaking in tongues. That's what we know. And that's all we know. And all we know is that that's what the Lord himself designated as a sign 
that the dispensation had now changed. Hallelujah. So what we don't want to do is minimize this. We don't want to make this appear as if it is something weird or it's something strange or it's something that we can't understand. We don't want that to be uh, something that, oh God, speaking in tongues. So if you've never read past uh, the gospels and you've never really read the book of Acts, let me encourage you to do so. Because a lot happened after the ascension of Jesus Christ that did not happen in the Gospels. Now, let's just look at, for just a moment, we're going to go back to Ephesians, get your paper Bibles. And as we dig into uh, this this truth of speaking in tongues, of unveiling the mystery of speaking in tongues. There are a lot of things that I want you to grab that I be, I'm going to be real slow because I got I to gotta get you into that place where you really, really understand. This wonderful spiritual gifting of speaking in tongues the evidence of the baptism in the Holy Spirit is not taught a lot. It's not taught well. As a matter of fact, the majority of Pentecostals and charismatic ministers do very little teaching and preaching on the gift of the Holy Spirit with speaking in other tongues. They, they do very little, little teaching on it. So the benefits and the purposes of speaking in tongues is sometimes somehow mystified. Uh, I I also believe that we are in a in a place where we don't fully understand the value of speaking in tongues. I don't think that we fully understand the value of speaking in tongues on a regular basis. So I I was doing I was doing some study here. As you make your way to, um, as you make your way to your book, your Bible, Ephesians chapter number six, did you know that more than 600 million Christians have received the gift of the Holy Spirit and do not speak in tongues regularly? Do you, do you know that? That it's probably numbers probably old, but that there are so many Christians. I'm talking specifically about those that have embraced Jesus Christ, whether they are Jewish Christians, whether they are Muslim Christians, whether they are American Christians. I'm talking about those who have placed their faith in Christ and have been exposed to an upper room experience. I'm, I'm telling you that the estimate is over 600 million Christians. But they do not speak in tongues regularly. Wow. They do not speak in tongues regularly. There's some of you on this, on this, on this class. You have received the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. But you rarely speak in tongues. You rarely speak in tongues. <laughs> you don't engage speaking in tongues as a part of your prayer life. You don't engage speaking in tongues as a part of your intimate time in worship. Very rarely, very, you, know, you don't speak in tongues in your home. You don't speak in tongues while you're driving. Sometimes if you get happy in church or the spirit of the Lord is moving real high, you might you might release something like that. But there is so much more to this. The same way that I speak in English, I should be speaking in tongues. Whatever your natural language is, as much as you talk in that, you should be talking in your prayer language. You should be talking in your 
heavenly language. You should be talking in your spiritual language as much or more. Are you listening to me? And so when, 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 we, when we think about the value of tongues, we are not, I believe, acknowledging the fullness of Holy Spirit. We're not acknowledging the fullness of Holy Spirit as we ought in terms of speaking in tongues. I don't believe. Now, not only that, but we don't even teach it well. <laughs> we don't even teach it well. And so for those of us that are in non-Pentecostal or non-charismatic environments, how much do you teach on speaking in tongues? How much do you preach about? Where does it land in your in your catechisms, in your uh, in your new members, in your altar call? Where does it land? <laughs> where where does it land in terms of priority? <laughs> and so. It's very clear for me to understand that the majority of people who do not um, speak in tongues in our churches, that it is probably because uh, we rarely teach on it. We rarely, rarely teach on the benefits of it. We rarely preach on the power of speaking in tongues. And so I want this time to encourage us to dig into the teaching of it. Now, the first thing that I believe uh, that, that we should embrace is the, the advantage of speaking in tongues as a, as a part of spiritual warfare. As a part of spiritual warfare, because we are fighting flesh and blood with we're not, we're not fighting flesh and blood. We're fighting principalities. We are, we 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 are not. We're not doing well in our warfare. We're not doing that well. We're not as successful as we should be in our warfare. Those of you that are fivefold ministry gifts, those of you that are leaders in the church, Sunday school teachers, superintendents, I want you to repent. If you do the new members class in your church, if you are doing the catechism of your church, if you teach Sunday school, if you're teaching young people, you need to repent. If you're not making this a priority, if you're not making this, if you're not equipping the people of God to win the warfare that is coming against them, then what are you doing? What are we doing? Now, Ephesians chapter number six says, put on the whole armor of God. We went through this and I'm going to keep going through it. That we must put on the entire armor of God. That we can stand against the wiles of the devil. That we are fighting principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. But we must put on the armor. We must put on the armor. Thank you, Joyce Tucker. She said, I repent. <laughs> Amen. I said to uh, our worship team many, many years ago, before you even start rehearsal, you all should spend 15, 20 minutes just praying in tongues. You shouldn't even start a rehearsal and you're not praying in the Holy Ghost at least 15 to 20 minutes before you, before you even sing a note. That should be a devotional before you even start. Why? Because speaking in tongues unlocks spiritual mysteries. Speaking in tongues unlocks spiritual mysteries. Revelations come by speaking in tongues. And so the worship team should be praying in tongues before you even sing a note 
corporately together, just praying in the spirit. We, we have really made speaking in tongues kind of like, you're okay if you do, but you are really, you're really okay if you don't. And you all should repent. You should repent. This is something that came at Pentecost. Why would God make this the sign and the move of Holy Spirit's dispensation if it wasn't important? My goodness, what are you talking about? And I've said this to our worship team as every now and again I slip in to see if that's really happening. But until you begin to speak in tongues, where does it land in your new members orientation? Are you working towards having a congregation 100% that is baptized in the Holy Spirit? That all speak in tongues? Are you working toward that end? Do you want that to happen? That everybody in your church is a baptized in the Holy Spirit believer? Your children's ministry, your youth ministry, your worship team, your music ministry. Is it, shouldn't you be working toward that end? It shouldn't be random. It shouldn't be, oh, I, I, ooh, I might speak in tongues and I might not speak in tongues. Really? Why isn't this more important to you to make sure that every believer in your care has embraced this wonderful gift? Why don't you preach about it? Why don't you teach about it? So let's demystify this. Amen. <laughs> Sister Carrie, Mary Milton Spencer, this sets an atmosphere for the spirit of God to move. It sets an atmosphere for preaching. It sets an atmosphere for signs and wonders. Why is it just something you throw out every now and again? Come on. We, we, I'm talking to you about whether or not you personally have embraced the fullness of the spirit. Oh, is it just something you do here? Talk about Shika Temple. It's something you get happy and that's you speak. Some of you don't speak at all. You don't speak in tongues at all. You don't speak in tongues. You don't pray in tongues. You don't prophesy to yourself in tongues. You should repent. Because this is the gifting of the Lord. <laughs> and he made it important. He made it vital. Now, the thing that, that I want to really help you to understand is that verse 18 of Ephesians 6 says, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Now, if you look there, it is a capital S, pray in the spirit. So this is praying in the Holy Ghost, praying with your prayer language the vocabulary of your, of your spiritual uh, life is speaking in tongues, all right? And I don't have to get happy to speak in tongues. I, I, I don't have to, I don't have to have a, a drum and a, I don't have better. I don't need excitement for me to speak in tongues because speaking in tongues is my second language. Speaking in tongues should be your second language. You are bilingual. You should be speaking in tongues daily. Ooh, Lady of Contest, I speak daily in my sanctuary when the spirit hits me in the car. Absolutely. You should be speaking in tongues in the shower. You should be speaking in tongues when you're getting dressed. You should be speaking in tongues. On, you should be praying in the spirit on all occasions. You should be speaking in tongues when you're driving, when you are getting ready to go into your job, your place of employment, when you wake up in the morning. This is not for church. This is a part of your spiritual armor. Oh my God. Somebody put that in there. Somebody put that in there. 
Oh, come on in here, Elder Williams. Dr. Marla King. Come on. Come on, Lisa Kirby. Let's go, Quincy. Let's go. You should be, you should be speaking in tongues as your second language. And if you don't use your tongues, if you don't use them on a regular basis, you are speaking in tongues as a part of your daily walk, as a part of your prayer life, as a part of your spiritual engagement against demonic powers, then you must resurrect, you must resurrect this. You must raise this back up. You don't have to be in church to speak in tongues. You don't have to have a high service for speaking in tongues. This is a part of your spiritual armor. The breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, the shield of faith. Your loins are girt about with the belt of truth and your shoes are the gospel of peace. This is what you do so that you can win the victory over Satan and his plan. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so now when you say, all right, I have this, uh, help, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, I have on the shoes of peace, I have on the gospel, I have gospel shoes on, hallelujah. I have the sword of the spirit. I have the, I have the shield of faith. Next verse says, but pray in the spirit at all times. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers. Wow. So you should be speaking in tongues. So this whole concept of I don't have to speak in tongues unless I'm in church or it's not really important or it's not really priority. Uh, I don't, I don't have to, I don't have to pray in, I don't have to pray in tongues. You know, I, if I do, it's okay, but I pray, I pray, but do you pray in the spirit? How much of your prayer time is in English and how much of your prayer time is in your spiritual language or whatever your native language is? Because there are people here that don't speak English. English is their second language. Some of you have another language and English is your second language. So you might be a triple lingual. I don't know what that is, but you have you you're fluent in more than one language. You should be fluent in your spiritual language. You should not need an organ. You should not need a worship. You should not need a choir or good preaching for you to be speaking in tongues. Because it is it is the gifting of God through Jesus Christ that comes with Holy Spirit. Now, you know, there's this argument, well, does everybody receive tongues? Yes, everybody can speak in tongues that receives the gift of the Holy Spirit. Well, I thought it was a gift just for some. I don't know who told you that. Let's demystify that. Let's take the let's take this hardness out and the confusion out. Let's let's get rid of that. Let's let's pull that down, Dr. Hope. Let's get rid of the fact that you think only a few people speak. No. So so stop giving yourself the excuse that I don't speak in tongues because I didn't receive that part of the gifts. Get that out of your mind. That's wrong teaching. Woo, that's wrong teaching. <clears throat> And so you should be, you should be multilingual, <laughs> thank you, Keanu, bilingual, trilingual, multilingual, or polyglot. You speak in many languages and one of them should be your spiritual language. Hallelujah. Woo, shata dama oshkata. Hallelujah. And so you must consistently practice this. You should, you should consistently practice praying in tongues, speaking in tongues, worshiping in tongues, singing in tongues. 
You sh this should be your everyday conversation with God. Your everyday devotional. This should be the way that you get into the presence of God. Hallelujah. Ooh, and so if you come from the Baptist church or you come from a context where speaking in tongues is seen as secondary, then you're here now in this class to learn so that you can change that. That you can change that. You can change that. Because here Paul says, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. <laughs> so let's change, change what you're thinking, change what you perceive, change what you've assumed. That it's not, it's not something I need to do every day. I speak in English every day. Why wouldn't I speak to the Holy Spirit every day in his own language? Just think about it. Think about how you've been taught. Now let's, let's, let's demystify this. Let's, let's deconstruct what it is that has been set up in your, in your mind, your belief system that makes you think that speaking in tongues is random. That speaking in tongues is not for your everyday use. Let's let's get rid of that that mindset. So I don't care if you're Baptist. I'm Baptist. I speak in tongues more than you all. <laughs> I am. Some of you are Methodists. So? So you're Presbyterian. You're Lutherans. So you're Jewish. You're Muslim. So? Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. That's Romans Chapter number six, stay with me, folks. Pray in the spirit. That is a part of your spiritual heris, uh, uh, inheritance, your heritage, is that now not only do you have the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, your loins are girt about with truth. You have on the gospel boots. You have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And you have the shield of faith, but now you must pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Wow. That's what, that's what Paul is teaching us in Ephesians chapter number six. So speaking in tongues is a part of your spiritual armor. That's just that we just skimming the surface. We haven't even gotten into how rich speaking in tongues makes your some of you preachers. I'm just gonna say it. You ain't gonna like me, but it's all right. You'll be back tomorrow. Some of you preachers, your preaching is weak. It's very shallow. It's very shallow. You are going for the emotions. Your 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 preaching. <laughs> <laughs> your, your preaching is your preaching is very weak your preaching is shallow and you know it you know you know your preaching is weak and it, and it's not so much that you don't study but you don't have no insight you don't have insight you you, you study you read the bible and i'm giving i'm giving you the benefit of the doubt that you do try to prepare, but it's very shallow. And said, well, what, what, what do you mean? What do you mean, Bishop? It's shallow. You know it's shallow. You go for the emotions. You, go, you don't go for revelation. And, and it's very, <laughs> very shallow. <laughs> and it's, and, and it's, and it's not, impactful because you don't pray in tongues you don't pray in tongues you don't you don't prepare, you don't you study you read but you don't pray in tongues before you study you don't pray in tongues and anybody who has maturity in god can tell you a shallow you're very shallow. 
and you are a shallow preacher. You are a shallow teacher. <laughs> Ooh, and, and, and you go into the process of preparing your messages by reading books, by pulling up commentaries, by studying uh, the linguistics of, of, the, of the vocabulary, but you don't pray in tongues. We, we, you don't pray in tongues. So your preaching is very shallow. You say, what does that mean? Because you're not built up. You're not built up. Your, your holy faith. Thank you, uh, Dr. King. Uh, you're not built up in the Holy Ghost. So your, your preaching is shallow. <laughs> very, very shallow. And, and, and you do not go for the revelation you don't go for the revelation of it a uh, young lady in our church uh, dr henry she said something to me we were listening to some preachers uh, online and i was like you like that you enjoy that she said oh she's intelligent oh he's intelligent and i said what do you mean by that she said there's no power there it's just intelligence now, let me tell you something that opened my eyes because some preachers I engage because of the information that they share. However, there is nothing there that makes my spirit leap. <laughs> You're not bringing any enlightenment to it. You're not bringing anything that can I can eat and live that changes my mind i'm talking to you elders you teachers you young folk that's trying to preach i'm talking to you old folks that have been preaching a long time it's shallow and this is why the people of god don't have spiritual maturity because they're eating from the table of those who are shallow Revelation, when you are praying in the Holy Ghost, when you are praying in tongues, before you approach the study, before you write your manuscript, before you pull the first book off your shelf, you should be praying in the Holy Spirit. It is your spiritual weapon. It is a weapon. And so this shallow kind of preaching, now I'm not even going to address those of you that don't study. I'm not even, I'm not even bringing you up because I'm not going to waste time with you. I'm not going to even waste time with you. If you, if you have the nerve and audacity to get up and preach to God's people and you haven't studied, I'm not even going to address you. I'm, I'm going to let God deal with you because that's a level of dumb that I don't even address. That's so dumb that I can't even address that. That's the level of stupid. I don't even, I'm not going to even teach. I'm not even going to give you a moment worth of recognition. <laughs> but I am going to talk to those of you that study to teach, study to preach, study to minister, but you don't speak in tongues. I'm going to talk to y'all because there is value, at least a little value that you place on your assignment. But those of you that don't do no, I'm not, I'm not wasting no time with you because that's a level of stupid that I don't even deal with. That's a level of absolute dumb that I, I'm not even going to address you because you, you already know you're not going to take up no time here. But for those of you that are studying and you are doing your due diligence, but you're not praying in the spirit, you're not praying in the spirit. Whatever you release is shallow. Whatever, you've not even tapped the surface of the revelation and the mystery that is hidden in the text. And then you study from people that don't speak in tongues. Good God Almighty. <laughs> Come on, Glenda. <laughs> Your grace, Bishop McCrary. That, 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 listen. So I'm not dealing with that. I'm not going to be distracted by, by you. You're here to start over. But for those of you that are putting the power and the enlightenment 
that comes from preaching by the spirit. The power that comes by preaching because you have spent time praying in the Holy Ghost. You have spent time praying in the spirit. You have built yourself up in your most holy faith. That's the beauty of your spiritual language. Woo! That's the beauty of your spiritual language. That is the beauty of your spiritual language. And that is why there is a distinction between those who preach with power and those that preach with intelligence. I got a few young preachers that hang around me and I'm, I'm on them. I'm on them. They don't always do what I say, but I still am on them. You sound intelligent. You sound learned. But you haven't given me any revelation. You haven't given me any insight of the text. You just do a lot of preaching and talking. But there's no insight there. There's no weightiness. There's nothing that will make us convicted because without praying in the spirit, you are going for the emotional response. You're not going you're not approaching the desk, the sacred desk, with the intent of, of unlocking the mysteries of the scripture, of unlocking the mystery of the text, the, 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 the scripture that is there in front of you that everybody can see is, 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 is not the, the reason you've been called to preach. Everybody can read it, but only those that pray in the spirit can unlock the truth of it can unlock the mysteries of it great is the mystery of godliness great is the mystery of the text of scripture of preaching the charisma the preaching moment yes you have emotions yes you you, you have passion yes you have fervor but no revelation and I know it is because you do not pray in the spirit before you preach. You do not pray in the spirit before you prepare your messages. You don't pray in the Holy Ghost. I can tell a psalmist from a Levite. I can tell a person who has a beautiful voice versus someone who has been in the presence of God. That speaks by, that sings by. When a person comes to the altar to pray, when a person comes to the altar to read the scripture, the invocation in the early part of the liturgy, I can tell those who have been praying in the Holy Spirit versus those who just are intelligent enough to read well, to pray well. There is, there is a difference of those that pray this is the beauty of your spiritual language you all say it's anointed you call that word anointed i believe that there is a distinct sound there is a distinct sound of those who have been in the presence of god by praying in the spirit this is what they, they found out with, with Jesus. They said, he don't talk like everybody else. He don't walk like, there's something about him. When those apostles, after Jesus had been ascended, they said, we don't know. We don't think they're skillful. We don't think that they're very well learned. But one thing we know, they've been with Jesus. There is a distinct sound for those who pray in the spirit. When you stand before the people of God, there's an elevated frequency. Yes, Dr. Phil, there's an elevated discernment. Yes, you're intelligent. Yes, you put some time into the studying, but you didn't pray in the Holy Spirit. And those of us who are mature, we know you didn't. We know you didn't pray in the Holy Spirit. We know you don't have that prayer life. We know that you're not praying in the Holy Spirit. Your discernment is not sharp. Yes, you gave us an intelligent message. 
Yes, you were well prepared, but you did not pray in the Holy Ghost. This is your spiritual armor. This is, this is how you make the distinction between those that are, that are studied and those that are spiritual. Ooh, so the beauty of speaking in tongues, the beauty of praying in tongues. I want to start off with just praying in tongues. I just want, I want us to understand just praying in the spirit. I haven't even gotten to prophesy and I'm not, we won't get there for a minute. I just want you to understand the value of the spiritual weapon of praying in the spirit. It's not praying by the spirit. This is not praying with the spirit. This is praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. My God, listen, listen, listen. If you had to choose, choose spiritual. Now, if you can grab both, where you are spiritual and intelligent, do it. But if you had to choose, choose spiritual. Because the revelation of Holy Spirit is much smarter than anything you're ever going to learn. The revelation of the Holy Spirit is more brilliant than any author's book. The revelation of Holy Spirit is more genius than any professor in any school. If you got to choose, choose spiritual. Good God Almighty. Oh, shut up, my kishko. How did I see? Brenda I I I I love the fact that I'm learning. I love the fact that I'm learning. I love the fact that God has allowed me to engage the halls of academia. I am I'm extremely blessed. But let me tell you something. If I never walk in another school, if I never walk in another classroom, if I never engage another book, another paper to write, if I never engage a, a, another assignment to research, I'm good. Because if I'm praying in the spirit at all times and on every occasion, there is nothing hidden from me. There is nothing I will not know. There is nothing that I cannot teach. There is nothing that I will not be able to ascertain, to access. If I'm praying in the Holy Ghost at all times and on every occasion. Because Holy Spirit is the gift that makes revelation available. That unlocks the mysteries. But if I don't pray in the spirit, if I don't use my tongues to pray in the spirit, if I'm not praying in the spirit 20, 30 minutes a day, if I'm not praying in the Holy Spirit an hour a day, if I'm not praying in the Holy Spirit before I preach, before I study, before I minister, before I sing, before I go to work, what am I taking to the world? What am I giving you? Listen, parenting your children, pray in, the, pray in the spirit. Being a husband, pray in the spirit. Being a wife, pray in the spirit. Oh, Rico, Baba Bashi, and Dedi, 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 D
Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we praise you. Hallelujah. Oh, Satan, Oh God, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, God. Oh, God, we thank you. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we give you glory. We give you praise for the things that you are doing, for the things that in the mighty name of Jesus. God, open up our understandings, open up our ears, open up our revelation knowledge, open us up, oh God, to receive, open us up, God, to understand. Open us up, God, to implement. Open us up, God, to authenticate. Open us up. Open our minds up. Open our understandings. Open up our understandings in the name of Jesus. Open us up, oh God, to understand it. Give us a thirst and give us a hunger to know more, to know more, God. I pray for those that do not understand right now. I pray for those that are hearing and I have no idea. God, I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to be deposited in them right now. I pray for the hungry, for the thirsty right now that are watching, that are observing. Oh, I pray for those that are spiritually dehydrated, that are in a deficit of knowledge, that are in a deficit. Although it may be common to me, though it may be something, God, that is every day daily for me. There are those that are watching now that do not know, have not been exposed. So I'm thanking you now, God, for those that they will not be frightened, that they not, will not be afraid, that they will not run off, but they will press into this place, God, that they will press in, God, to the unknown, that they what they don't know now can be a reality in their lives. I pray for those that have 
receive the spiritual impartation. They have been careless at Tamuhusa. They have been at my mindless. Oh God, with this spiritual gift and spiritual impartation. And I pray for them today, God, that they will come into the knowledge of the deep. Oh God, the waters that are yet available to them. That they will, oh God, but I will have a resurgence. A resurgence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That they will have a resurgence. Oh, I pray for preachers. Oh God, and teachers now who have not approached this place of spiritual depth. I pray, God, that they would desire, that they would want, that they would desire, God, oh, to unlock the mysteries of your word in the ears of the people, God, that you send unto them. I pray for signs, wonders, and miracles, but I pray for a depth of understanding for every worship leader, for every psalmist, every musician, for those that usher, serve, and protocol serving helps uh, that they will have a deeper understanding and a sharper discernment in the in the mighty name of Jesus oh sing your spirit Lord sing your spirit God and we give you glory and we give you praise oh God this incredible gift thanks be to God for this incredible gift and we give you glory in the name of in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you. Ata, ata bohushkata. Ata na bohushkata, ata bohuska. In the name of Tigata, ata na bohushkata. Send your spirit, Lord. Resurge a resurgence. A resurgence of spiritual power, a resurgence of spiritual hunger, a resurgence, a resurgence of the baptism in the Holy Spirit when they first believed, a resurgence of their prayer language, a resurgence of speaking in tongues for those that have never received that God they are here now, right now, today, and when they listen in the days to come, that the Spirit of the mighty God, the Spirit of the living God uh, would fall upon them as it did on the day of Pentecost um, would fall upon them God that this would stir up something in their spiritual minds um, and in their spiritual bellies God in their spiritual wombs uh, up out of their belly would begin to flow rivers of living water and out of their mouth will come a language they've never known before in the mighty name of Jesus increase their faith uh, increase their desire, increase their want, increase their appetite now, God, in Jesus' name. Stir us up, God. Build your church, Lord. Build your church, Lord. Build your people, God. Oh, Oh, preach about Oh, Holy Spirit, we are so sorry that we have not engaged you more, that we have not embraced you more. This beautiful gift, this beautiful gifting. Oh, God, that I'm on Try us again. Fill us afresh. Hallelujah. Restore unto us the joy of salvation uh, every past every fivefold ministry gift uh, dry dehydrated and I'm brittle feel afresh oh God oh God build your church Lord Build your church. Oh God, put the coals of fire on our lips. Put the coals of fire on our lips, God. Oh, sanctify our very tongue. Sanctify our very mouth. Oh God, 
Oh God, make our mouth, yeah, by a weapon of war against the devil. Make our tongues a weapon of against evil, God. You know, I'm not make our tongues. Uh, there's a mighty, 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 mighty go against the attacks of the enemy, God. In the ashe, God, na 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 Messiah. Here, Moshe, on the ashe, God, we give you glory. Oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, she. God, we thank you. Kataba. God, we go. Oh, she. Oh, she. Oh, she. I got to get out of here, folks. Kataba. She. I need the Osha. Oh, she. In the name of Jesus, God, pour out your spirit. Oh, God, take away the confusion. Take away, take away, take away the fear. Take away, take it away in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We give you praise. I got to get out of here. Pray in the spirit, folks. Pray in the spirit. Those of you that have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you don't speak in tongues, I want you to pray this prayer with me now. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, pray it with me now. Pray it with me now. I have accepted Jesus as my Savior by faith. Pray it with me now. And I am a candidate for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Pray it with me now. Pray it with me now. Don't wait for next week, next month. Receive today. Therefore, I by faith come asking. For the baptism in the Holy Spirit and with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Lift your hands and say it. I receive it by faith. I feel my mouth. Feel my belly. Fill me up with the Holy Spirit. God, I receive it. I receive it. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Receive it. I'm ready for my next level. Put fire on my tongue in the name of Jesus. Oh, receive today. Receive today. Begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth. Begin to begin to praise him. You can't feel you can't speak in tongues with your mouth closed. Open your mouth. Open your mouth now. Open your mouth. Open your mouth now. And the very spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. That raised Jesus. The very spirit of the Lord that was in that upper room be where, right where you are now in the mighty name of Jesus receive now receive now don't you walk around in this era and you have not speaking in tongues and it's so available it's so rich receive now God, we give you glory. Open your mouth and receive the beauty, the beauty of the spiritual language. Receive it. Stop fighting it. Stop resisting. Stop asking a million questions and receive by faith in Jesus' name. This is the greatest thing that happened after the resurrection. Receive it by faith. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Let the tears fall. Let the tears fall. That's the washings. That's the washing. That's the washing. Now, Open your mouth and speak in tongues. Open your mouth and receive the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, He's pouring out his spirit upon you. 
Oh, ba 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 shik ba ba ya. Now speak, 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 speak. You need this gift. You need this so you can pray in the spirit at all times. Ha da da ba oshkata. Ha da 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 shiko. Ha da da ba oshkata. Ina na ba kushkete di di biasa ya. Riba ba oshata. Bando na na ba kishkata da 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 ba saya. God, we give you glory. <laughs> we give you praise. <laughs> this is no mystery. This is not to be confusing to you. Pour out your spirit, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That the spirit of the Lord flood these airways. Let the spirit of the Lord flood these airways. Whenever someone would watch, whenever someone would view, hallelujah, let them be intentional right now. Let them be even now, God, unable to move, unable to scroll, unable to cut it off. Let the spirit of the Lord invade these airways. Let the spirit of the living God invade Facebook, invade right now where you're listening, where you're watching right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, God, we give you praise. In the name of Jesus. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, that I invade Instagram, invade, invade YouTube, invade wherever this is being seen, as it's being shared, as it's being watched. That your spirit fall, that your power prevail over us and make our tongues a weapon of war against the devil and his wickedness in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise that Jesus will be exalted. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabba Baba Oh, In the mighty name of Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Oh, Rabba Kashkata. In Jesus' name, I got to get out of here. I want you to speak in tongues all day today. I want you to involve Holy Spirit. I want you to embrace those of you that work in secular work, those of you that work in the marketplace, those of you that are entrepreneurs and business owners, pray in the Holy Spirit. If you are doing people's taxes, if you are doing people's teeth, if you're doing people's uh, surgeries, you're doing people's eyes, you're doing whatever you're doing, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh, shout out in the name of Jesus. Amen. I got to go. Oh, shout out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.